Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mix Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this roll-up box. I've done similar before in the past, they've been really popular. So this time I thought I would do one and the idea has actually come from my edge dies. And this is the Dragonfly, so I know some of you will recognise this. You'll probably also, if you've got the wiper dies, you'll recognise the sentiment and the papers are from one of my earlier collections as well. So I was just having a look around at ways that I can incorporate the card making dies into 3D projects and I just thought it would look really nice as the edge or the top of a gift box so this is how it looks on the side here you have these four boxes so it's got a nice profile and you can see there obviously mine's got nothing in it so I just need to kind of squeeze it into place there but you can see once everything's in there and then it's just attached using some velcro so just open those and then you'll see it all kind of comes out like this and you have these four boxes and they all open like so you can get lots in them and this one I've reinforced the edges because during the tutorial I think I cut some of them a bit too much on the side so they were popping open but I've just gone and stuck another piece of cardstock over the top there so and then this one here <laughs> again it's, it's there's nothing wrong with it but it opens this way when it should open obviously the same as all the rest but that's how they open so you've got heaps of space, you've got room here as well to be able to stamp and write things. But um, I think it's turned out really nice. I really love how it's come together. Let me just pop these back again. So, and then it just all rolls up. And then make sure it's got its square form again. You don't have to use Velcro, you might want to use ribbon. You may put handles on yours as well, like so. And I think it looks fantastic. Such a nice gift to give somebody. So let me show you how to make it. Okay, so this is what I've used for today's project. So I'm using the 5x7 Excellent Edges. Now you can use the ones for the landscape or the portrait or any edge dies that you have. This one I've used the Dragonflies but you've also got the presents and the flowers. You're better off having something that's maybe not so directional, so the dragonflies, they fly in all directions, and the flowers, obviously, they're symmetrical. The presents, obviously, go in one direction, so you could have them lying on their side there, because those do kind of, you know, point towards, you know, they face upwards as well. So that's the dragonfly there, so that's the border or edge border that I'm using. And then you've also got this one here, so the stars would look really good, because I know some of you have that one, and along with the flowers there. And again, you have the balloons, which you could put on the side, I guess, because some of those, again, they do kind of face up. So that's those. And you could, if you're someone, you know, you're confident to be able to shrink down the sizes, the 6 by 6 ones would look lovely, because that bow, I imagine, would look really nice at the top as well. Um, and you've got the butterflies. So... There's quite a few there, but today I'm going to be using the dragonflies. And then the papers, I'm using that lovely Funky Flowers paper there. And that's from the Scenes paper pad. And again, everything will be shared below. And, and the sentiment I'm using, this one here, is the Yay, It's Your Day. And it's from my slider set. So again, I know some of you got that, but you can use any sentiments that you might have. So first of all, you're going to want four pieces of cardstock for the main, for the actual boxes. And these ones here, so it's eight and a quarter by 11 and a half. Now I know that is larger than the letter size, but I needed that half inch for my tab, you know, the, to be able to close the boxes. So you may decide that you, you know, if you're using 11 inch, then you can add the half inch. You can just attach it, you know, cut a one inch piece and just attach half an inch underneath. So you've got the half inch hanging over, or you might decide that actually you will maybe do do yours at eight and a half because that's what the width of yours would be and you could do all the same scoring that I'm going to do but you'll have half an inch here rather than the quarter and you could have your boxes so don't worry about that there yours would be 11 inches you fold in all of your sides and you have yours opening from the long side from the top the reason I've not done it for this is because you you might get a bit of gaping because it would be quite a long box but it's an option there but I am going to be using the A4 size today so this is eight and a quarter by 11 and a half. Along the 11 and a half inch side you want to score at 2, 9 and 11. And then along the 8 and a quarter side you want to score at 2, 4, 6 and 8. Okay, you can get rid of the scoreboard and now you just want to fold and burnish all of those score lines. Okay, then you want to do some cutting. So I've got that quarter inch tab on the left hand side. So I'm just going to cut up this score line here just to remove that small corner 
and then just put a little wedge on that tab there. And then you just want to cut up all of these ones along the bottom, just to that first score line. And then again, rotate it so now you'll have this small quarter inch tab on the right hand side. You want to cut down past the first score line, down to the second, and remove that section. And then again, just take a little wedge off at of the end there, because that's now our little tab. And then just cut down all of these. So you're going, this time you're going past that first score line down to the second. Okay, so you'll have something like that. Okay, so now I'm just going to stick it together. So I'm just popping some glue on that tab. You can do all the rest of the cutting while it's together. So just in half like so. And I like to just open it up and then fold it over that side as well and just burnish it. This end here where you don't have that extra half inch tab, this is the base, okay? So really all you wanna do here is just fold in all of the sides, but I like to decide what one you're gonna fold down last and then on two of them, just take a little bit off of each of the sides and it will just give you a nice finish because obviously you do see these and then the opposite side like so so then what I'm going to do so they're the two that I've just taken wedges off of this is going to be the last one I stick down so I'm going to stick this one up first then I'm going to put glue on one of the ones that I've just cut and fold that in don't worry if it doesn't quite stick so I'm going to pop a ruler in there in a minute and then I'm going to pop glue on this one and fold the other half or the opposite side again where I've just cut a little bit off and then cover that all and stick that last one down. Then if you just grab a ruler, open up these four, pop the ruler in, you can just really stick that down. Now you'll have a nice tidy finish there to the base. Okay. Then these are just handy box sizes as well. So I mean, if you want to put some, you know, a little miniature would go in there, a little wine bottle possibly. Um, they're great boxes for that as well. Next, we need to now make our closure. So one of these is going to have this piece left on because you're going to be folding it in like that. But we're going to take some bits off the side. So I'm going to keep that one as that that one that I'm going to fold over. So what I'm going to do here is on this one. And this one, just gonna cut so there's about half left. And then just very, very slightly, just shave a little bit off, not a lot, because otherwise the box may pop open. You want it to become like a little, you want this bit to kind of wedge in so it like forms a little lock. So just take a little bit off. Sometimes, you know, some people don't do this until they go to close it all. And then you can see if this is gonna like buckle a little bit on the edges. This one, you're gonna cut off completely. So this is why I said you might want to do this when it's all flat, but I'm just folding them in and it's really easy to just cut right along that score line, like so. So now this will go in here, but you need to take a little bit off of this, but again, it's just a tiny amount. It's best to just take a small bit off first and then you can always add a little bit more. So now, there and you want it to wedge in so see it stays nice and shut okay so you want to do that for got four identical boxes okay so I've got my four boxes now some of my I've already put my pattern paper on I haven't done it on all the sides but I'm going to explain all that to you in a moment but you want to have all of those so don't worry about the mats and layers on yours for a minute we're just going to focus on starting to kind of lay this down on the case so what I have here is this is a piece of seven by A4 length. 11 inches will be fine because you add your edge to the top, okay? So that's like an extra addition that you add on. Now, I haven't, I've done the score lines after I've kind of, it's a bit like how I do the belly band. So I lay the box down and then I kind of folded it up just to get that perfect kind of, you know, placement. And then I've put another box on top like so and then I just fold this over. 
and then I put it in my scoreboard just to kind of you know embed the score lines so I just think you get a much nicer finish a much tighter case rather than me starting to explain the sixteenths of an inch and that kind of thing so what I've got this here what you want to do first of all is lay two boxes so this is the end of your cardstock okay you're going to lay two boxes side by side okay one is obviously right at the edge here and then the one next to it then that's when you then want to bring your card up and just kind of start to bend it up around the box okay and then put another one on top of here and bend it around again and then what I did is with a pencil is I put a pencil mark in fact I've still got it there I need to rub it out just there and then that's when I folded that piece up and then get your scoreboard and just go find a track where you kind of had the rough fold and just go back in with your stylus just to get a perfect score line but that way you know you've got a really nice tight closure around those boxes so that's what you want to do with one of them I'll go through the measurements of the matte layer and I'll talk through the edge die because I'm going to be doing that on this one but with the second one it's going to be a little bit different because what I want to have so we're going to go back to our boxes so I've got one box here now I'm going to start, in fact I'm going to stick this side because it's going to make more sense so and then that will make it more clearer for the mats and layers so this one here I've only put them on three sides and then I've covered obviously the ends there now my open end is here so you can see how it opens now I want mine to open when it's facing up so when the box is open someone can get into there and open it up you might want to do yours that way it's entirely up to you so I'm going to add my glue onto the bottom of this one and I'm going to stick this one right up to that score line just bring this up around like so and again I'm just going to open that I can just go in there and just make sure that glue's spread out okay close that one all up again Now with the next one, so I'll do this one here, or is it this one here? So what's going to happen is that's going to be on top like this, and this is going to come up around it, but I want to stick, make sure I've got the right end, it's going to be that one up, yeah. So I don't want to stick this onto here, I want to just add glue to this side and it's going to stick to the top half of this, so it's going to end up sticking about there. So Again, once I've stuck this down and then pull it down, you'll see. So I'm going to add the glue. I'm going to sit it on top of this box. And then I'm going to bring out this side. And make sure, because it's at 7 inches, this is all lined up here. See, it fits perfectly across the top because you would have bent yours and then scored it all to kind of marry up. And then I can just now open it. And I can go in with my ruler. So now we've got that one dropping down but when it comes up you'll see there it kind of locks in really nicely with that one. You can see how that all closes up. So now we've got those two in place I'm just going to kind of leave that there for a second. This piece is going to just sit on top of this and we're going to glue it in place. So I'm going to add some glue on here. So this is the same size, this white piece, as this piece here. So that's 7 by A4 length, which is about 11 and 3 quarters. But like I said, 11 you can do it as well, but you'll need to extend it with your edge. Okay, so now I'm going to sit this one over the top. And I'm not going to, I've got no folds in this at all, so you'll see exactly how I fold this one. But I'm just going to sit that one down there for a minute. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Now thinking about it, it might be better if you were to stick it underneath but just line it up to there because we're now going to be pulling this cardstock up and obviously I need to just make sure that glue is really, really secure but yeah, I think it'd be okay. So next, get another box and put it side by side and then bring it up really nice and tight and that way you just get, it's just how I do my belly band, you get a much nicer fit so now I can see I've got a line there so 
I'll do it now with my school board actually so I'm just going to bring the school board in and just find a track that I can line it up with so that one there and just score that a bit better and then that way I can just really bring that up now and you get a nice finish okay so I've got that one in place so I'm going to pop that box back on top there we go and then I'm going to put the other one the last one on top just sit it there for the minute bring this up and then just pinch it around the top of that one close that up so I just squeezed it out because this top one you will end up sticking to it like so and again just find a track line that up like so and you can burnish that as well if you want to okay so now what's going to happen is I'm going to be sticking that one like so so when the box comes up that's going to lock in there so I'm going to stick this one here actually yeah I'm going to stick that one down now so I need to add some more mats to this one hopefully this is all making sense it's just I want there to be an equal space between each one but I want it to all wrap up into that you know that square so now I'm gonna pop this one just in there like so and then we can in fact I'm going to stick that one in place as well so that one you're going to stick above that score line the last one and then just make sure when you stick them that it all kind of sandwiches together don't worry about this bit at the minute just whilst they're kind of in place I'm happy so I'm just going to open those both up and just with my ruler and just make sure I'm stuck down okay so now again you can see we'll just leave that one there for a minute because we need to now fold so what I did is I just put a little bend there open it up and you're going to obviously sit this one right next to the box and just add, make sure that all stays nice and straight now that one can bend like so and that's where it's going to join with our top piece here okay so this one I don't want to give you an exact measurement because everybody's edge die is going to be different so for me with this one here the end of mine is one and a quarter so all I need to do from this score line here is just mark one and a quarter with my pencil I'm just trying to show you how you can adapt it with what you've got like so and then I'm going to do a score line and then I'm just going to cut it because that's going to get covered with my border die or my edge die I'm not too worried just get that other way okay so each end is going to kind of finish slightly differently but when they all come up together you can see there how they all fold up into that shape we just need to cover it with our mats and layers so you are going to need three six nine twelve pieces of I've got mine here so this is to finish off the other ones but each of these measure one and three quarters by six and three quarters so they will cover the three sides of all the boxes then you'll want this piece for the if I show you on here so you'll want two pieces oh, I've got my dragonfly there and that's to cover this piece here so I've actually done mine to cover the whole part of it if you want to do your shorter you know you can but it's seven by four so two pieces and then you'll want two four six eight pieces of one and three quarter squared to cover the ends of your boxes so also I've got this piece here and I've got two pieces and they are to decorate the top so 
So I've got Yates or Day on both sides. So this here is one and three quarters by six and three quarters, and then one and a half by six and a half. And then that's where I've used that sentiment die. And I've just die cut a few of them, stuck them on top of each other, and then I've covered it with glossy accents. You can see there, it looks really cool. So I'm gonna go and get all this stuck down. Okay, so you can see now how it all comes together once that's down, like so, you can see it's closed. But remember when I said about them popping open, this one here wants to come out, but I think once it's closed, it kind of holds it in. So just make sure, you know, that, like that one there, I've probably taken a bit too much off of that edge there. So that's what I mean about them popping out. So but I think once they've got the stuff in, they're gonna stay in place anyway. So now you want to do your edge border. Now, this is kind of a directional one. So what you'll need to do is, if I was to just die cut another one and stick it on there, they're not gonna join up. Can you see they're different? Whereas if it's a symmetrical one, so for example, like the flowers, you could just die cut that and stick them on because they're both going to line up. But an easy way around, around that, or at least to get a nice finish, is I've got my cardstock here and I'm going to cut it with the die facing up and the cardstock over the top. And then I'm going to lay a sheet of copy paper over that so that any kind of markings that you might have on your plates won't damage or they won't go onto the cardstock so it would give it a really nice finish and then you just use your bone folder to flatten the sides and it will give you the perfect edge in that reversed orientation. So I've got the die there because I've, you can see my base plate is a you know there's nothing wrong with it but it's it's obviously heavily used. I've got literally just the right size cardstock here and then I'm going to sit that copy paper over the top, top plate and run that through and then remove the copy paper so now that is a perfect piece whereas you can see on the back there can you see all those markings and all those indentations if you put that on the front now that's what you would get and it wouldn't look very nice so if you just get your bone folder now and just go around the edges and you only have to do this on the ones that aren't a symmetrical image so they just won't line up but now I can stick this one on this side and can you see they perfectly line up and it looks nice it's got a nice finish to it so I'm going to grab my glue and just pop it all on that section there so then I'm going to sit that over there and I've done this box especially around the size of these edge dies so it's exactly the same width which is the seven inches but I just want to make sure they line up which they do spend a minute making sure that's all in place and then I'd already gone ahead and die cut because you get the same amount of dragonflies there to fill that edge border do it that way as you can see they all fit in to their little spots there turn that one the other way there we go okay so I've already cut them all out and I've put glossy accents over them all and it's all dry so you can see they've all got that shine on them. Just pop a little bit of glue on the body and then you can see I like to sit it down on the left hand side first and get that white kind of border, line it up and then push down on the body but keep the wings kind of lifted. So again just pop a little bit of glue. So This one's going this way so again just sit it where it should go, make sure the tail it's nice and straight as well, like so. so I'm just going to go along, stick these down. Okay, and then I've got two here, which I'm going to stick onto the front. I'm going to stick them all down. I'm not going to lift anything on these ones. So let's do one there they're going to catch I think and then I'll do one kind of like that. Okay so that's all done now I'm going to add my velcro dots. So these are the dot and dab ones these are the 20 mil or the two centimeter ones so I'm going to pop one or one set there and then make sure they don't go together yet just pair up the other ones at this end here and then get everything lined up so there we go now you could also 
pop some hole punches in there and you can have a little handle if you want but I'm really pleased with that it's so easy put a nice gift tag on there Let's just open that up make sure they're secure and then it just opens up I've realized as well that I've got these ones all face you know they open this way but this one opens that way <laughs> <laughs> but there you go you get hopefully I've given you lots of kind of alternatives different ways to use your cardstock um, have different openings you know even if you're using the shorter length cardstock how to add you know because this is just an, an extra kind of piece that you add onto it but um, there's ways around that I can always put sellotape on them anyway when I put the gifts in because I always say I don't expect people to keep these things you know enjoy them and I also need to add pattern paper onto that one and onto that one as well but I need to cut that because I've put the papers away but I just love really love how that all closes up and then just make sure that all secures up nicely there there we go I just love this way of using the edge dies in 3D makes as well, so gift boxes and gift bags, because you could run that along the top of a gift bag and I think it'd look really nice. So there you have it, so thank you for watching. Um, I'll link everything as always in the description box below and I'll be back again very soon with another tutorial. See you then, bye.